Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about the best web applications for web development. So with any other job, it's really important that with when you are building your website that you have the good tools to ensure that your work is easy and also of high quality. Web development tools can significantly streamline creating your website content as well. The good news is that there's no shortage of web development tools and there's loads available. However, this can also mean it can make it, can make it difficult to find the best ones. So whether you're seeking web development tools for beginners or experienced developers, these applications uh, will, will help really streamline, streamline that process for you. So what are web development tools? You might have heard the term what dev tools as a nickname, but nevertheless, the definition is still the same. So the term web development tools or web applications refers to software and apps that provide web developers with the ability to, de to debug and test the code and interface of the website. Or application that they're creating. So technically speaking, the term web application tools refers to the products used to debug and test, but a lot of industry will use the phrase to kind of refer to the total number of tools that they're using during development process. Because many developers don't distinguish between the two, um, there's quite a few uh, software applications that we'll go over today. Depending on how experienced you are, maybe there are tools that you already use, um, maybe there are applications that you've heard of, um, and if you're already working in the field, you'll see some familiar applications as well. So when it comes to web applications, um, it's important to note the distinction between front-end and back-end website development. So front-end developers are responsible for creating the interface and functions that user engages with and what they see. A front-end developer's job is client-facing and they work around visual aspects of an app or website that the user sees. Um, but back-end development refers to the server side of the website, the part that users can't see. So why are web development tools helpful? Once you learn about some of the web development tools examples, you'll realize why they're essential. Um, the best applications will streamline the process of your website creation. And as a result of effectively working with these applications, developers will end up with a more functional, attractive, easy to use uh, website more quickly than, uh, than otherwise. When it comes to deciding what would be a web, the best uh, web application tools, um, some things you wanna look out for, um, are things that if the web application you know doesn't complicate things so the best web application tool will be relatively intuitive easy to learn um, and that they work well together so some web application tools are extremely niche while other offers a lots of kind of f f features some developers prefer products with a wider breadth of functionality and others prefer to kind of curate a stack of like highly niche tools um, but it's really important that all the applications that you have integrate smoothly it's also important that the application that you use keeps your data secure. Um, security always comes first. Um, never work with the web, web application tool that is potentially faulty or could put your company or your com customer's data in harm's way. Sticking to well-regarded, well-known web tools is the best way to avoid um, any kind of potential security issues that you might have. And you also want to make sure that the application tool is within your budget. So applications vary in cost, but keep in mind that you should only work with products within your price point. You don't want to get acclimated with a with the application only to find out that it's impractical to keep because of how much it is or um, if there's any subscription fees and things like that. So the first kind of tool, uh, application that we'll talk about is code editors. So code editors are used by every single kind of developer um, out there. They are basically used by programmers and web developers to write and edit code. Um, and they're used to kind of develop, develop any kind of software and apps as well as other kind of de web development purposes. Um, before code editors, um, people would use things like Notepad on Windows or TextEdit on Mac to write their code. But the problem with those was that they don't have enough features specifically designed for coding and that therefore it used to take longer and a little bit more difficult to write code as well. Um, so some of the best code editors out there, um, the first one is Sublime Text. So this is a front end web development tool um, and it's for Mac OS and it features uh, sort of really efficient and, in, in, and an intuitive interface. They also have a version for Windows that are, that's out now currently. Sublime Text is considered to be one of the best text editors because it offers lots of keyboard shortcuts um, and that enable quick navigation and provide the ability to perform uh, different edits at the same time to name a few functions. Um, and if you're looking for web development tools for beginners um, and also pros, then Sublime Text is really intuitive that way as well. It's quite easy to, to learn. Um, 
and quite easy to use as well. So that's one what that's one application that um, we recommend, especially for if you're looking for a new code editor or you want to try a different code editor. The next one is Atom. So Atom is a free open source uh, text editor. And one of the reasons that Atom is really popular is because it offers really high levels of customization. So if you're working with the team, you'll find Atom to be a uh, really reliable application because of how it fa facilitates collaboration. In addition, you can also add uh, significant features with HTML and JavaScript. You can also install open source packages um, to enhance all the features that already come with uh, Atom. Um, and also it's compatible with Linux, Macs, and Macs, Mac and Windows. So moving on from code editors, um, the next web application um, that was really useful, especially if you're uh, collaborating or if you're developing a new website, um, is GitHub. So, so GitHub is a code hosting platform and it's used for version control and collaboration. So it lets you and others work together on projects from anywhere but it's also good for storing, tracking, and collaborating on software projects. It makes it really easy for developers to share code files and collaborate with other developers on open source projects and allows you to work together more efficiently. You can add co-authors to your code, uh, which simplifies the collaboration process. If you're building any kind of open source software, GitHub is the go-to platform that most developers will use. So when you are uh, building uh, your website, you want to make sure that you use a CSS preprocessor as well. So a CSS preprocessor is a program that lets you generate CSS um, using a special compiler, compiler, basically. Then they use that to create a CSS file, which then can be used to uh, used on your web, web to website. Um, so SAS is a CSS preprocessor that enhances the functionality of regular CSS, so it allows it to work more like a programming language. Um, some notable features of SAS include nested rules, inheritance, mixins, and variables as well. Um, so SAS can allow you to make your workflow a little bit more effective and efficient. Um, you'll, see, you'll see the same great results with traditional CSS, but you'll get there much quicker using SAS. So as mentioned before, as a web developer, whether you're front end or back end, but mainly front end, you will be using JavaScript to help make your site more interactive and gives your site more things for users to kind of click on and attract users as well. Um, so using an a application like TypeScript will essentially allow you to, will actually make it easier to read and understand your JavaScript and also um, be able to catch any bugs that you write uh, when you're writing your JavaScript code. So it as essentially an open source language that builds additional features on top of traditional JavaScript um, to kind of make it easier to read and understand. Um, and it will also catch sort of any quickly catch any code and type errors as well. So it's a really good tool to have as well if you're able to get that. So other applications you can have is Chrome Dev, tool, dev Tools. So Chrome has built-in web development tools that are very, very good. Whether you use them on the Chrome browser or even Safari browser, you'll get the ability to access the internals of your website application. So Chrome Dev Tools will help you optimize your loading times and also allow you to edit the HTML CSS in real time while viewing a performance analysis of your site. These tools are, ups, are um, updated regularly as well. Um, so Chrome and it's all free to use as well. So. Chrome Dev, Dev Tools also come with a significant amount of docu documentation. So if you're, if you're ever not sure of anything, um, or if you want to find out more something, or even if you just want to learn, um, Chrome developers um, have developed this as well. Um, so it's a really cool sort of application to use when you are building out your website as well. Next up is CodePen. So CodePen should be included on every list of one of the best web application tools for beginners, because it's very, very intuitive and user friendly. But that's also not to say that experts can't benefit from using this uh, application either. So it's an online code editor that supports HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and it can work for front-end projects. So if you're working on something client-facing, you can consider adding CodePen to your bag of web development uh, applications as well. The good thing about CodePen is that you can view your results in real time to debug your site more efficiently. And there are also thousands of publicly ac accessible pens created by developers that you can use on your own website for kind of in inspiration and trying to recreate yourself for learning purposes and things like that. So next is Bootstrap. So if you're interested in front end frameworks, you've likely heard of Bootstrap. Um, this is a CSS framework and it was 
also it was created by the same developers who created Twitter as well. So it's gained a lot of momentum because Bootstrap simplifies the process of designing mobile first responsive websites. So mobile friendly development is now uh, a must for successful websites um, and apps, not just on for for users, but also for Google search engine results pages. Um, and Bootstrap, again, puts mobile first design into your code from the very start. So you also enjoy that when it comes that it comes with an SVG icon library to kind of help enhance the bootstrap sites that you create. Um, so yeah, and this uh, nowadays, uh, making sure more people, more and more people are coming onto websites using their mobiles. Um, so Google now more than ever is putting a lot more focus on mobile design. So if your site is not, may look wonderful on desktop, but if it's not accessible by mobile, um, you're not going to see any kind of results um, on, on Google search engines. And it also makes it difficult for customers to kind of stay on your website as well. Um, so if you're looking for a way to simplify the process of designing mobile first, then Bootstrap might be the way to go. So on the topic of responsive website design, um, Foundation Can Help is another application that can help create a website, but make that process a little bit simpler. Um, so Foundation offers an array of front end frameworks that you can use to start building your customiza customizable website and email designs really quickly and efficiently as well. Um, not only do they optimi offer optimized HTML themes, but you can also use sort of the building blocks to craft something unique to your company um, in an approachable way as well. And the, the good thing is that the framework is accessible on any kind of device, any medium, any kind of accessibility as well. Um, so you know you're covered with that as well. So depending on your experience in the web uh, development section, um, you may or may not have heard of something called application programming interfaces or APIs. Um, the An API is essentially a, a software uh, intermediary that allows two different applications to essentially talk to each other. Um, it's an accessible way to extract and share data within uh, organizations as well. So it's really, really important um, when you are building a website that you use some APIs, but that's to connect to a payment gateway if you're an e-commerce website. APIs can help enhance um, the functionality of your website as well. Um, and this is where Postman comes in. So um, Postman essentially will allow you to create your own a API to further uh, adaption of your company. If you're building APIs, then this is uh, Postman would be the way to, would be the way to go. Um, it's an API building and testing platform, so it simplifies that creation and allows for more enhanced um, collaboration as well. So as mentioned before, there are some applications that are used by front end developers and some applications that are used uh, more by back end developers. And Figma is one of the applications that's mainly used by front end developers. So Figma calls itself a collaborative interface design tool. Um, but you'll also find that working together is easier with the help of a user interface tool as well. So Figma is, is free. So if you're in growth mode and looking to make most of your resources, this can be incredibly impactful, but it's essentially an interface design tool that's making, that makes sort of designing anything, whether that's mobile applications or web applications easier. Um, Figma is entirely browser based and therefore not only works on Macs, but also works on PCs, uh, or Linux and even Chromebooks as well. And it has a web API that's completely free as well. Um, so Figma, it can help you sort of drop a website logo and anything like that. And again, it's more of an application used by front end web developers. Um, Another design uh, app that you might like is Sketch. So developers love this design app for Mac OS. It's because it's really easy to use and offers lots of functions. Um, and whether you're looking for vector editing capabilities to constraint uh, resize or anything like that, Sketch is a really helpful solution to all of your design questions. Um, and this tool ha also has a collaboration functionality so that you can create with your own team. The only two downsides of Sketch is that um, unlike Figma, it's not free. Um, and also this is purely for Mac OS, whereas Figma you can use on Mac, um, Linux or Windows. So coming back to more sort of front end design, um, Tailwind CSS is a very popular framework 
um, used mainly by front-end developers, but can also be used by back-end developers. Tailwind CSS offers a route to design the front-end of your website, um, but you don't have to leave HTML. Um, the product is mainly for more experienced developer, but if it's but if its capabilities fit what your project requires, it might just be the perfect tool for you. With Tailwind CSS, you can develop both style and structure at the same time with this tool. Um, so in, in that sense, it makes it kind of easier. But again, if you're a beginner, this might be something that you'll use sort of later when you've developed a bit more experience and things like that. Um, but Tailwind does offer that route to kind of design the front end of your website as well. So Visual Studio Code is another fan favorite for developers. It's another code editor, but this product is technically a text editor, but it can elevate to new levels using their extension library. So this product does meet a variety, variety of web application tool needs, whatever that may be. Um, what's good about Visual Studio Code is that it supports TypeScript, JavaScript, and Node.js. Um, and there's also the opportunity to integrate with other products as well. So as we looked at before, so Chrome Development Tools uh, was an application um, from you from the developers at Chrome, but Firefox develop also have their own version of development tools. Um, but Firefox offers also offers a variety of helpful de developer developer features such as those that help view a website source code, storage, memory, and even a debugger as well. Um, if you are looking for web development tools for beginners, um, you'll enjoy sort of this console version that. Um, Firefox offers. It's a really excellent way to try out snippets of code and get a basis understanding of coding knowledge as well. So those were just some of the uh, a few of the web applications out there that you can that you know we recommend that you know have good reviews and can make it easier to when you are developing your website. At the end of the day, the best web development applications are those that work best for your business. Um, each developer has their favorites and the best web development applications are those that essentially that fit your, the needs of your business. Um, but again, as mentioned before, when you are looking for a tool, you want to look for something that is compatible with other uh, applications that you have, the ones that keep your data secure um, and the ones that are within your budget as well. Um, and it might be the case of just trying out a bunch of different tools, trying out different sort of code editors, trying different um, application tools to see which one you're comfortable with, which one you like. Um, and kind of going from there really. And hope you enjoy this video. Check out the rest of our playlist for more um, in, if you wanted to learn a bit more about building your own website and uh, web development processes as well.